Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Today we're going to be having a look at the Sapphire Radeon HD 7950OC. This is a 3 gig card with the 7950 graphics card. It is overclocked and it has an aftermarket cooler that is the Dual X cooler featuring dual 92mm fans and 5 heat pipes. We're going to have a look at the kind of power consumption, the kind of noise output, heat output, as well as performance that you can get from this next generation high performance graphics card. We're going to start with the power consumption from the 7950 because it's one of the most impressive things about it. So in addition to using an, the all new 28 nanometer manufacturing process to drive power consumption down and performance up, AMD has also introduced what they call zero core technology. So what zero core technology allows this graphics card to do is consume as little as three watts of power while it is in a powered on system. That means that this test bench that you see here, which has a performance Z68 motherboard, 8 gigs of RAM, an overclocked Core i7-2600K to 4 gigahertz, a liquid cooling system, an SSD boot drive, a USB 3 external drive, and finally an optical drive consumed less than 90 watts at the wall in an idle scenario. That means the actual hardware, including a 7950 overclocked graphics card, was drawing less than 80 watts from the 80 plus gold power supply. For users who aren't necessarily gaming 24-7, which I hope is most of you, that is amazing because it means while you're using your computer, you don't have to suffer in terms of power consumption and heat output from having a high performance card. In my hands right now is a reference 7970, so the reference cooler has a couple things going for it. One is that the fan is at the back and the rest of the entire cooler is enclosed, meaning that all the air is exhausted out the back of the card. So this is an advantage, but it is also a disadvantage because you can't get the same kind of performance out of a rear blower fan as you can from a design like, ahem, Sapphire's Dual X Cooler. So the Dual X Cooler has the advantage of being much lower restriction overall. That is to say, you can see, you can see the gaps between the fans and the fins and around the edge of the card, meaning that airflow is able to pass freely down onto the card, whether it's to cool the memory or the VRM using the included heat spreader that's over the bottom of the card, or to even cool the components around the card itself. It also means that because we are allowed to have multiple points of entry for airflow, we can use dual fans, which just stands to reason we have more airflow and more surface area that we're able to use as a whole. Now the disadvantage is that if you have a case that doesn't have very good airflow in it and doesn't remove the hot air from your case, you're not exhausting it with your card. You're going to be recirculating it. However, most modern gaming cases either have good front to back airflow or side vents that can be positioned directly over the graphics card, which I usually recommend to use as an exhaust to take that heat away from cards just like this one. Now besides the 28 nanometer manufacturing process, the 7950 brings a lot of other new technology to the table as well. So number one is PCI Express Gen 3. This doubles the bandwidth over the previous generation PCIe 2. Although please note guys, that doesn't mean double the performance, it means there will be a slight edge in poor performance and if you're running a Crossfire multi-GPU configuration, whether you're running two cards or three cards, you can use lesser PCI Express 3.0 slots to achieve the same bandwidth. So a PCIe 3.0 8x slot is going to provide the same performance as a last generation PCIe 16x slot, which is great news for those of you on mainstream platforms. Another really cool thing is the fact that it features 3 gigs of memory, which is extremely important for running iFinity, that is multiple displays at high resolutions, because when you overflow the frame buffer that's available on your graphics card, it can be the difference between 100 FPS and 20 FPS if it has to swap out to system memory. So having 3 gigs of memory per card means that in a dual card configuration you've got three gigs accessible for that giant resolution versus in previous generation cards where you were stuck with only two gigs. Also a very cool feature. Last but not least is iFinity 2.0 which basically is their way of branding the display outputs that are available on these cards. We've got DVI, HDMI and DisplayPort 1.2. We've got 3D support enabled on either DisplayPort or HDMI. We've also got support for up to four displays per DisplayPort output if you have a compatible hub or compatible monitors, so that's another neat thing. And finally, last but not least, this card supports 
4K. So that is an upcoming HD plus resolution that is four times HD and is going to drive much, much denser pixels on the desktop, although we don't have any monitors yet for consumers, which is gonna be better, per, better, more clear images. And with that increased frame buffer, we're actually going to be able to store the textures we need to game at that kind of a res. Now, all of this is all fine and good, but if it doesn't have the horses to back it up, then it can output to as many 4K displays as it wants, and it's gonna run at two FPS. But the 7950 does have the horses, so all of my benchmarks were run at the high presets in their respective games at 1080p, which means you guys are gonna see there's performance to spare for cranking up the resolution. Also of note, particularly about the Sapphire 7950OC, is the fact that my system power consumption didn't go above about 220 watts from the wall, and the GPU temperature didn't go above 55 degrees, which is very, very impressive and it did not get loud at all. So it's basically got that trifecta going on for the cooler that is included with it. Now I wanna explain my results very briefly here. All these games were run with real game benchmarking. That is Fraps recording of me actually playing the game. No canned benchmarks whatsoever. Next is the 7950OC here is the same card as 7950 at stock. Even though this card runs at stock at 900 megahertz, I wanted to simulate what you'd be getting if you bought a non-overclocked version of the card. And last but not least, the 7970B2 is my 7970 flashed with a 7950 BIOS, so it is running with all of the functional shader units enabled, but at the lower default 800 megahertz 7950 clock speed. So with that out of the way, here are the results for Battlefield 3 which you've kind of been looking at already, so we're gonna go ahead and change it up. Next, we've got Crisis 2. So in Crisis 2, the 7950 really holds its own, performing up there with a GTX 580 and with even a little bit more overclocking headroom to spare. And finally, we've got The Witcher 2. So I took a few relevant modern generation games that are quite demanding on the graphics hardware. You can see how, they, how it scales compared to other high performance cards. I never include information about pricing in these videos because you might be watching it a year from now when the pricing isn't relevant. So you guys can go ahead and look up the prices on NCIX.com and I hope you've enjoyed this episode of NCIX Tech Tips.